Yeah, I just want to give a quick how to how to use a battery hydrometer because sometimes when you got a dead battery, you want to see what cells on are bad or whatever. And these only cost, um, you know, this is a real cheap one. It's probably a few dollars. But after you use it, you want to rinse it out with water so the acid doesn't screw up the, uh, you know, the, the rubber bulb. But basically, you just put it in there, squeeze the bulb, draw some fluid up, and you can see this cell has full. It's uh, all for the balls or to the top, right? I'm putting the water up to the top there. It's a fully charged cell. That means 100%. If you have one ball that floats to the top, it's 25%. Two, it's 50. Three, it's 75. Four, it's 100%. So this thing's got, this is about 75% on that cell. Let me see when I get down here, I got two dead cells. And this battery's not coming back because I've been trying to, what happened was, um, it's a very, very slow parasitic draw on the El Camino. It's not much, like even if you didn't start it in two weeks, it would start up if you let it sit there maybe about three, four months. It's enough to uh, kill the battery. And this battery was low tested fine, even though it's an older battery. It was low tested fine. It was always good. And it's the second one it kills. So I'm keeping the car disconnected, the battery disconnected from the car. Tried desulfating these plates and... Um, it's got two dead cells still, see? Four bolts to the bottom. But if you ever want to check these devices, you want to see which um, cells are bad, this is the best thing to get is a hydrometer. It's maybe $3. You can get them any place. In de department stores, um, any any parts store, three, four bucks. But make sure you rinse them out with water. And uh, you don't need to get nothing fancy because these meters can cost you a lot of money. And... I mean, they're not a lot of money. I mean, they can cost you 15 bucks or something versus 3 to $4 or something. Or three. I think this was like $3 in Wally World or some crap, you know. But um, the thing is, um, when you're checking these things, um, you know, you're going to find out exactly what cells are bad. Now, in the case of this, these cells got um, so discharged, the plates got so sulfated that it became a short in the battery. So no matter what I do, I can't bring it back, even though I got the desulfators and stuff like that. Once there's a short due to sulfation, hang it up. So what I got now is I got the uh, battery in the car disconnected. So, okay, you know, if I go here, I said I just leave it disconnected, and um, just like that, you know, it's off of here. So I got a brand new one in here, and I'm going to pick up another brand new one that's like a huge one like this is a group 29 deep cycle battery not really for starting cars but um, since it's so huge a group 29 it'll it'll work no problem but I just keep it disconnected <laughs> and uh, check the volts and put a, a meter on it once in a while I never had a problem for many years because um, once I got my uh, Jeep going I let this sit thing this this thing not be used as much and if I put a brand new battery in here, and just to just to throw something out here in the end because you know, I'm talking about batteries, like a um, usually the range where it's acceptable for a parasitic draw is uh, 50 milli milliamps, which is 50 one thousandths of an amp, right? 50 one thousandths of an amp, 50 milliamps. And I had a video on how to check that. That this thing is actually about 100 milliamps, which is about. Um, uh, a tenth of an amp. So, like, you know, if I let the car sit a week, it'll still start up fine two weeks, but if I let it sit about several few months or so, that slow parasitic drain will kill the battery. And uh, so, I'm keeping the battery disconnected. So. But once you get the plates sulfated this bad, you know, I'm just going to tell you too, because I tried using the manual charger on it to like slightly overcharge it to kind of like bust through that sulfation. Forget it. It's it's cooked, man. It's cooked. Nothing you can do about it. And once it's shorted out like that, forget about it. But, you know, just want to present in this video, too. Like, if you're using these testers and you're checking for bad cells, um, you don't want to try to bring them back sometimes with um, an electronic charger. If it's not bringing it back, you know, it brings it up to, say, 12.7 volts, then it shuts off. If it's, It might still show, like, 
a, a crappy cell and won't pass a load test, you want to use one of these things, a manual charger. Let it overcharge a little bit at a couple amps, you know, like a slow charge for maybe a half a day. Then this is where this device comes in handy and see if that cell, the bad cell, is starting to come up a little bit. It's getting a, a little more charge in there because as that cell, once you start busting through that sulfation um, and you cycle the battery in and out a bunch of times and you leave a desulfator on there like this, like a battery minder desulfator, and you leave it on there for a couple months, you'll probably bring it back. But if it's shorted out, hang it up. It ain't going to work, man, because no matter what you do, it's shorted out. I mean, it's done. If you got heavy, heavy sulfation, forget about it. So I just want to throw a couple more tips in here versus just using a hydrometer on this. So, um, you know, because a lot of times people are looking for more information about the battery because they got other battery problems and that's why they want to know about a hydrometer. So I threw a couple more tips in here.